Uh, let's bring into our conversation Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio of Foreign Relations and of the Intelligence Committees in the Senate. Um, first of all, Senator, your reaction to the news tonight, apparently 59 cruise missiles into this single target as uh, retribution for the uh, chemical attack. Well, first, I'd say it's not just retribution. That uh, site has strategic value to the Syrian regime. It's where they launched that chemical attack. It's where they're currently involved in a pitch battle. We will probably see future attacks launched from. They had lost some territory to non-ISIS rebels over the last two weeks. And so this was the chemical attack that you saw a couple days ago was uh, partially as a result of ho the hopes of kind of regaining some of that territory. The second is that uh, they are now clearly in violation of not just a treaty they signed in 2013, but also of a UN Security Council resolution of an OPCW uh, mandate that they get rid of these weapons. They were signatories to this, along with the Russians and the United States, and they are in clear violation of it, and you saw that a couple days ago. Um, obviously, the hope here is that this is the first and what I hope will be a multifaceted plan to bring this to an end, because as long as Assad is in power, you are going to have radicalism in Syria. The people who have lost loved ones to his brutal regime are not going to just accept his rule. You're going to, as long as he's there, you are going to have a radical jihadist movement. Even if you destroy ISIS, the al-Nusra groups will rise and take their place. So it is in the strategic interest of the United States. And I would make one more point. There are now significant U.S. assets uh, based all over that region and ne very near where some of these things are happening. The presence of chemical weapons poses a threat uh, to American personnel. Uh, as it has for some time. Let's agree for this conversation that this has uh, hampered to some degree, but certainly not ended Assad's ability to launch uh, airborne attacks. Where do you see this ending? Uh, and, and in that light, what did tonight get us? Does this lead to, to a next chapter? Well, first, I, d I do think it impacts the cost-benefit calculus not just for Assad, but for Vladimir Putin, who himself is a war criminal and, uh, and has abated and has actually been an accomplice to many of these things that you're seeing. So I do think it changes the risk calculus. I, I do not want to de-emphasize. I think it's, it would be a mistake uh, to devalue the strategic importance of this airfield. We'll have to see what the assessments are of the damage. That's a significant number of missiles launched at a site that, quite frankly, is not Andrews Air Force Base. It is significant, but it's not of that size and scope. So I'd be curious to see how much infrastructure is still left there for future attacks. The, the third thing that I would point out, of course, is that the, from a delivery mechanism, uh, it probably, my guess is they lost significant ability to launch airstrikes in that part of Syria for the time being. And that's going to have an impact on the ground and, and some of the battle going on on the ground. So, uh, but look, Tonight is not symbolic. I do think it has a strategic value to it. But the question now is, well, what happens next? Is there a comprehensive plan that follows this up? And that's perhaps the most critical question, because uh, tonight will not end the threat that Assad poses. But, it, but hopefully it's the beginning of something broader. Senator Rubio, it's, it's Rachel Maddow here in New York. It's nice to have you with us tonight. Um, let me just ask if you think that uh, Congress should authorize U.S. military force in Syria. There's been a lot of debate as to whether or not the post 9-11 authorization could conceivably apply to even attacking uh, terrorist groups in Syria. It would seem to be a further stretch to say that it would apply to also attacking the right. Syrian military. Should there be a new authorization? Well, those are two separate topics. I do. ISIS is basically a spinoff of Al Qaeda. And so I, I continue to argue that we have the current authorization on the war on ISIS. In the case of the commitment of American ground troops in an extended battle on the ground, I think that would certainly require an authorization. And I think you'd find support for it if properly targeted, uh, or I should say uh, support on, for that concept that, that it would require authorization. In the case of an exigent circumstance where you have a government in Bashar al-Assad that not only is committing atrocities, but is putting at risk American assets and personnel in the region because of the possession and a willingness to use nerve agents, a factor we didn't have two, three, four years ago. I do think the president has the ability to act in those circumstances as he has tonight. Um, but as far as the broader strategy, I mean, that's going to be the challenge moving forward. What is the posture of the United States now? I think you have seen a shift in the last 48 hours, to be frank, whether I know that a lot of people watching this tonight are not uh, supporters of, of President Trump. But I can just tell you, I truly do believe that he was impacted. And I think you saw that yesterday in the press conference uh, with the King of Jordan. It was a different language, a different body tone. I think it's impossible to see some of these images that we're seeing and not be moved uh, by, by what's happening and, and the reality of it. I think one thing is to be a presidential candidate. Another thing is to be the president. 
and to be confronted with this reality. And, uh, and I think tonight was a part of that. Are you at all um, troubled by the rapidity of change in terms of this administration's position toward Assad? Uh, I'm struck by the fact that it was just a week ago today that the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson was saying that um, th whether or not Assad stayed in power was a decision purely for the Syrian people to make. The United States had, no, uh, had nothing to add in terms of that decision. He said exactly the opposite today. R regardless of the, the merits of either one of those positions, um, have, there, have these changes in position been uh, too sudden or, or too fast or too unexplained? Well, first, and I, as you know, I was critical of those statements, and I actually said yesterday that I believe it's one of the factors that Assad took into account. I think the second thing that we need to wait and hear more about is whether, in fact, there was evidence, as I believe there probably was, that Assad didn't just possess chemical weapons, but was prepared to use them again in any moment, including sarin gas. And if that were the case, then I think certainly you would have justification for a rapid uh, development of your public of your policy with regards to all of this so look I think the most important thing tonight this was not a symbolic strike I truly do believe that it, it achieved an important objective but it is not in its totality going to achieve what I hope is going to happen which is the conditions for an alternative to Assad to emerge I don't think Syria is going to be a stable unitary government uh, anytime in the very near future but I do think we can begin to take steps to provide alternatives to Assad's rule and in particular you've got to figure out who are going to govern Sunnis in Syria because they will never again allow themselves to be governed by Alawis or the government of Assad who has murdered and continues to murder so many innocents uh, as, as he has done with the assistance of Vladimir Putin in the commission of these horrifying war crimes that we now have seen happen far too often. Uh, so much to discuss here. Florida Republican Senator Marco Rubio, who will be seeing so much more of as Senate uh, intel hearings get cranked up. Senator, please come on again. Thank you very much for Thank your you. time uh, tonight.